the longest sea bridge in the world, the HZMB, suddenly disappears into the sea. Welcome to a modern underwater tunnel. Such tunnels are built using ingenious techniques that join different concrete elements. How do the joints remain leak-proof under tremendous hydrostatic pressure? This experiment provides the answer. I have filled the meeting region of the tunnel elements with oil, and I can easily separate them out. Oops. Now let's remove some oil using the syringe. Wow, the elements are bonded with incredible strength. The same theory is applied under the ocean for these gigantic concrete elements. Observe very carefully. Very soon, a water chamber is going to form between them. First, pulling jacks are installed between the new and the previous element. An external positioning system slightly lifts the new tunnel element. The pulling jacks are then activated and the elements close. Now, you can see that some water is trapped between the two elements, forming a water cavity. Similar to the experiment, by simply pumping out the water, the negative pressure inside the cavity will automatically force the elements to bond more firmly. The geometry of these gigantic concrete elements is sophisticated and interesting. How are they fabricated? How are they transported? Let's visit a concrete casting facility in the harbor. This area can be a purpose-built basin or an existing dry dock is prepared near the water. They use reusable formwork and a huge amount of scaffolding and support is needed to support these forms. Some forms are even hydraulically powered. Once the rebar and form arrangement is complete, the concrete is poured into the cavity. Once the concrete is cured, the forms are removed. The length of the section just made is around 20 meters. However, each tunnel element should be 100 to 200 meters long. The trick is to move the small element forward on tracks and the next casting is done in the same location. In this way, the final tunnel element length is achieved in 8 to 10 phases. You can see they've built huge tanks inside the concrete element. We will understand their purpose later. Once the concrete is cured, each end of the tunnel element is sealed with a watertight, temporary bulkhead. When the tunnel elements are ready, the basin is flooded with water from the adjacent waterway. At the same time, the ballast tanks inside are also partially filled. The partially filled water tanks help stabilize the elements and prevent irregular movements. These bulkheads ensure the inside of the tunnel element remains dry and air-filled. The concrete segment is designed so that when it is airtight, it floats on water, a clever use of the principle of buoyancy. Once afloat, the massive tunnel elements are towed out of the basin by tugboats. The element's top surface is just 30 centimeters above the water's surface. The elements can weigh tens of thousands of tons. The elements are now towed to the tunnel site. To place these tunnel elements, the seabed has to be ready. The seabed needs to be excavated into a perfect trapezoidal shape with a well-prepared foundation. How do the engineers achieve this in the deep ocean? These huge dredges are performing the most crucial job of the tunneling project. They are preparing the seabed for the placement of the heavy tunnel elements. Clamshell dredgers are most commonly used for this purpose. They remove sediment and prepare the seabed in a trapezoidal shape. A layer of granular material such as gravel is often placed in the trench to create a smooth, level and firm surface for the tunnel to rest on. The tunnel elements have reached the trench area. Large pontoons are waiting for them. Now, the handover of the element from the tugboats to the pontoons takes place. Before the immersion of the element, the pontoons must be placed exactly above the trench area. Look at this complex web of mooring ropes attached to the pontoons and the element. They are anchored to the seabed. We have made a simplified web of cables to control the position of this floating object. This is interesting. Just by pulling these cables, I will be able to move this object in X direction. To control the Y direction, just pull these two ropes. 
by pulling these two ropes you can control your of the object. With this clever mooring rope control, the element is carefully positioned over its final resting place. The pontoons receive position signals from the GPS and robotic total stations. Now, can they simply fill the ballast tanks again and immerse the tunnel element? You can easily guess what will happen here. You may keep the tunnel element exactly above the resting area and drop it, but the reality is that it will never reach the target. Inside the water, objects behave in a crazy way. What we need is a controlled immersion. To immerse the element with control, we again use a clever cable arrangement. Powerful hydraulic strand jacks support the element. Even if the ballast tanks are filled, the strand jacks will decide when to release the element. The clever cable arrangement again guides the position of the element. You may observe some measurement towers on the element. They are fitted with survey prisms. With the help of three total stations located on shore, the engineers can accurately determine the element's yaw and position. Moreover, the element constantly communicates with a base station on shore to provide real-time 3D positioning data. The use of real-time kinematic GPS helps to control the tunnel element's position with sub-centimeter accuracy. Remember, the tunnel element immersion is a very slow process. The entire procedure from the moment it arrives at the location until it is securely in place takes approximately 12 to 24 hours. You can see a new tunnel element is approaching a previously laid one. Please pay special attention to this large rubber seal called a Gina gasket. Once the pulling jack is activated, the Gina gasket gets compressed and forms a preliminary watertight seal. We've already seen the technique of tightening the elements further by creating a vacuum in these chambers. Let's revisit the experiment again. Wow, the elements are bonded with incredible strength. There is no way to remove it. If you release the oil, the bond is weak again. This means before releasing the vacuum between the elements, they should be bonded permanently. By maintaining the negative pressure, the workers first install omega seals on the joint. Next, they seal the joint region permanently by pouring concrete. Now, they can remove the bulkheads and the pressure will become normal. Now, an interesting question arises. Should the water inside these ballast tanks be emptied? No, if we do that, the buoyancy will overtake the gravitational force and the tunnel will uplift. This is why there are special chambers inside the tunnel for pouring concrete. First, concrete is poured into these chambers. Afterward, the water in the ballast tanks is emptied, and the tanks themselves are removed. It is clear that after joining two elements, the bulkheads between them can be removed. Different tunnel elements are installed this way, and the tunnel progresses well. What about the last element? Of course, this cannot be installed in the usual way. The method engineers use to close the gap is known as the tunnel closure. A special element called a key element is used for this purpose. The key element has a deployable part. Using the normal method, the key element is lowered into the gap. Now, the deployable part is activated. This creates a watertight joint. Next, the engineers pump out the water between the bulkheads. From here, it's easier. Workers do the remaining tasks inside these chambers. And finally, the last four bulkheads are removed. The tunnel is complete. Now it's time to backfill over the top of the tunnel with soil. The tunnel technology we have developed so far is called the immersed tube tunnel. Eventually, the immersed tube tunnel takes on its final form. It's a pleasure to watch trains and cars running through this sophisticated tunnel network. But what are the other tunnels for? These are service tunnels. In case of an emergency, these doors open and tunnel personnel can enter the main tunnel. You might have seen the geometry of the popular channel tunnel, a tunnel built by TBM. 
Are immersed tube tunnels better than the TBM tunnels? The choice between an immersed tube tunnel and a tunnel boring machine tunnel depends entirely on the project's specific geography and requirements. Each method has distinct advantages and disadvantages. Immersed tube tunnels are best for shallow underwater crossings like rivers and harbors. Construction of ITTs in high water depth regions is not practical. Moreover, the high hydrostatic pressure can cause structural damages to the tunnel elements. ITTs are often built with a rectangular cross section. This is highly efficient for traffic, allowing for multiple lanes side by side without the wasted space of a circular tunnel. However, ITTs cause significant environmental disruptions. TBMs are extremely expensive, custom-built machines that can cost hundreds of millions of dollars. A TBM can tunnel deep underground, bypassing surface obstacles. The process of floating and sinking massive concrete tunnel sections can shut down or severely restrict busy shipping lanes for periods of time. TBM tunneling has a great advantage in this case. Apart from the entry and exit shafts, there is almost no impact water surface above the tunnel. Despite detailed geological studies, during TBM tunneling, engineers often encounter geological surprises. However, in ITTs, engineers have a very clear picture of the ground conditions since the trench is dredged first. Immersed tube technology has been established as a reliable method of constructing tunnels beneath the waterways. HCMP 6.7 km long immersed tube tunnel, Busan Goje fixer link tunnel, Ted Williams tunnel, Drogen tunnel, and the currently under construction Fehmarn belt fixer link between Germany and Denmark are a few examples of it. The Fehmarn belt will be the longest undersea tunnel when the construction is completed. I truly enjoyed the research and experimentation behind this video. If you have benefited something out of this video, please check out our Patreon page and try to support us. Take care. Bye bye.